While ULA and Blue Origin were celebrating the long-awaited success of their Vulcan flight, NASA encountered a setback. Their first robotic lander in over 50 years lost its trajectory to the moon just after a few hours of flight. The Peregrine lander commissioned by NASA was slated to touch down near the lunar south pole on the 23rd of February. A successful landing would have marked the first American moon mission since Apollo 17's arrival in December of 1972, and notably, the inaugural lunar landing by a private company. Shortly after the spacecraft detached from the rocket's upper stage, controllers encountered a concerning issue. An anomaly with its thrusters hindered the spacecraft's ability to align itself with the sun, posing a potential threat to its capability to make a soft lunar landing. The initial indication of trouble arose when the spacecraft couldn't adjust its position to allow its solar panels to face the sun. The ground-based engineering team managed to command the craft to maneuver into the correct orientation, enabling its batteries to recharge. These batteries are crucial for powering Peregrine's communications and scientific instruments, which at present appear to be functioning adequately. After numerous attempts, that aspiration has now been officially shattered. Astrobotics and NASA have focused on a potential explanation for the issues affecting its Peregrine moon lander. Astrobotics' current hypothesis regarding the propulsion anomaly on the Peregrine spacecraft is that a valve between the helium pressurant and the oxidizer failed to reseal after activation during initialization, stated company representatives in a post on X Tuesday afternoon, the 9th of January. This resulted in a surge of high-pressure helium causing a spike in the oxidizer tank's pressure beyond its operational limit and subsequent tank rupture, they further explained. In simpler terms, imagine this. You have a spaceship, and inside it, there are things that help it move around. One of these things is like a door that controls the pressure inside. Astrobotic thinks that this door didn't close properly when they turned it on, which caused too much air to go into another part of the ship, making it burst from not being able to withstand the extra air. In space, a propellant system leak acts as a thruster, kind of like how in the old cartoons we used to watch when a balloon gets poked and then it doesn't burst, but it goes flying around, which in turn hindered the team's ability to position the solar panels for charging the batteries. The Peregrine lander relies on a hypergolic propellant mixture, blending hydrazine fuel with a nitric oxide and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer solution. This established design ignites spontaneously when these substances come into contact, eliminating the need for an external ignition source. No need for lighters. Astrobotic spacecraft comprises two fuel and oxidizer tanks each, along with a fifth tank for helium pressurant. The craft features five main engines and 12 smaller attitude control engines. Astrobotic engineers have devised a method to prevent the lander from spinning uncontrollably. However, with a continuously operating reaction control thruster and a leaking propellant, the spacecraft's fuel will eventually deplete, resulting in its loss. While this explanation is preliminary, a comprehensive report will be prepared by an expert review board post-mission. All available data from the lander is being collected to support this analysis. The ULA's Vulcan rocket placed Peregrine on the intended translunar trajectory without any apparent issues. There's currently no evidence suggesting that the propulsion anomaly occurred due to the launch. So don't be pointing fingers, y'all. Despite the success of ULA's Vulcan rocket in positioning Peregrine correctly, the unfortunate propulsion anomaly remains unresolved. However, in the realm of space missions, setbacks, though regrettable, are not entirely unforeseen. Despite the historic first uncrewed moon landing 60 years ago, reaching and landing on the moon remains an arduous task. India's space agency experienced a setback with a lander that crashed in 2019. However, engineers persevered, attempted again, and achieved success with a landing in August. Conversely, Russia's Luna 25 mission faced failure as it crashed onto the moon's surface following an unsuccessful engine burn after its launch in the same month. China has made remarkable success accomplishing three three consecutive robotic lunar landings since 2013. This streak includes the pioneering landing on the far side of the moon and an ambitious mission that retrieved lunar rock samples for Earth. Reviewing the world's lunar landers over the past decade, the success rate stands at 50-50. The forthcoming Intuitive Machines mission must succeed in its lunar landing to maintain this coin flip of a statistic. The lunar surface serves as a resting place for numerous robotic landers and rovers that fell short of fulfilling their intended
intended missions. Reaching lunar orbit is an achievement, but landing remains a formidable challenge. The moon's thin atmosphere provides minimal drag for a descending lander, and the surface is littered with boulders, complicating making safe landings very complicated. Additionally, sunlight creates shadows and glare that can confuse landing cameras and sensors. Furthermore, the absence of GPS systems on the moon means there's no automated guidance for landing. Astrobotic was poised to be the pioneering contractor in NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, or CLPS, an initiative aimed at leveraging the private sector to bolster the U.S. Space Agency's lunar aspirations. NASA's goal, through various contracts, is to establish a consistent series of moon missions, a crucial step in preparing for the eventual return of Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface. I want to tell you that I did sell this program consistently with a 50% likelihood of mission success. Thomas Serbuckin, a former associate administrator at NASA who spearheaded the agency's program to fund private lunar spacecraft, remarked before the launch. The CLPS initiative aims to utilize private industry for delivering cargo to the moon as well, mirroring the method companies use to launch supplies to the International Space Station. Zerbuckin emphasized that while a single CLPS failure isn't catastrophic for the program, if commercial contractors encounter multiple setbacks, it would prompt NASA to naturally reassess its assumptions about CLPS. Suppose we're at the end of 24. We've done multiple landings, and none of them work. I think it's worth looking at the game. Did it make sense? Zerbuckin told Ars Technica last year. I really considered it an experiment when I came up with the idea. Generally speaking, NASA has done well to bet on entrepreneurial entities to do very, very hard challenges. Of course, I believe this will be successful. I think it's really important, come 2025 or so, to really look at the program and say, hey, is it successful? Are there things that NASA should do to affect the program one way or another? Amidst these challenges, the competition in the lunar race intensifies. As the U.S. readies itself for a sustained lunar presence, China, too, has been making substantial strides toward lunar exploration. The U.S. and China have maintained continuous activity both on and around the moon for several years now. NASA, alongside its international and commercial partners, initiated the Artemis program with the launch of the uncrewed Artemis 1 mission, which orbited the moon in late 2022. There are plans to dispatch astronauts into lunar orbit by 2025, followed by a mission to the moon's surface in 2026, the first such mission since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Ultimately, the U.S. is preparing for a sustained presence on the moon, which includes establishing a moon base and developing the Lunar Gateway Space Station. China has started an ambitious course through its Chang'e program. This initiative commenced with a lunar orbiter in 2007 and expanded with subsequent orbiters, a lander, and a rover in 2019. The Chang'e 5 mission triumphantly retrieved moon samples, returning them to Earth in 2020. China's upcoming plans include Chang'e 6, slated as another sample return mission in 2024, followed by the Chang'e 7 rover in 2026. Much like the U.S., China also envisions establishing a permanent presence on the moon, aiming to construct the International Lunar Research Station at the moon's South Pole by the 2030s. For other participants, India next plans to partner with Japan on the Lunar Polar Exploration Rover, or LUPEX, I would have called it Looper, which could launch as early as 2026, and will examine water deposits near the South Pole. There's a reason why countries want to reach key lunar sites first. While no one can own territory on the moon, according to the Outer Space Treaty, the Artemis Accords offer what some might describe as a loophole, safety zones. If someone sets up a landing pad, equipment, or infrastructure, others are expected to keep their distance from that spot in the interest of safety. This could let a country or even a company effectively claim crucial real estate. Earthly geopolitics significantly influence lunar exploration. The dynamics of being the first to land and forming collaborations play a crucial role. China, for instance, has extended invitations to countries like Russia, Venezuela, the United Arab Emirates, and Pakistan to collaborate on its lunar research station. On the other hand, India occasionally partners with the U.S. During Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the White House in June, India became the 27th country to join the Artemis Accords. What do you think about the latest advancements in space technology? Are you excited about the prospects of lunar exploration? Join the conversation in the comments section down below. Your thoughts and insights fuel this journey of discovery. Otherwise, that's about it for today's episode, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As
as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.